Hello dear friends, it's lovely to see you back on the Wednesday, a cold Wednesday today, but luckily there's sun. We love the rain too, but it's nice to have some sun back as well. Uh, as much as I was wondering whether we should be moving back into the church for these, I'm quite glad today that I can sit right next to my heater and be nice and warm. In fact, my heater is off, but that's okay. <laughs> I shall turn it on in a second, but today... Uh, we're having a very simple time of hearing the word, hearing a reflection on the word and singing together. So let us start now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to remind you today of God's chosen people. What comes to mind when you hear that term, God's chosen people? Do you think of the people of Israel when I say that? Or do you think of Paul saying, you are a chosen people, and that means all of us. We're going to delve into that today, but let me bring you, uh, there's two readings today, and um, I will read them both, one from the Old Testament, Jeremiah, and one from the New Testament, and I will start by reading you Jeremiah. So listen to this. This is the prophet Jeremiah speaking, second longest prophet in the Old Testament, and he's speaking to the Israelites just before they get expelled out of Israel, out of the promised land, and get um, get taken into exile by the Babylonians. And he's trying to warn them. The Lord is trying to warn them through Jeremiah that this is about to happen. They need to turn away. And there's even some words of encouragement in here, uh, in this warning that the Lord sends to them, which they will not heed because Jeremiah is the last prophet before they get sent out into the exile and then they will have to spend a long time away from the promised land again but listen to these words that the lord says through jeremiah jeremiah 31 verses 1 to 7 at that time declares the lord i will be the god of all the clans of israel and they will be my people this is what the lord says the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again and you will build and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again, you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, O oh Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. A very encouraging word. An encouraging word in the midst of Jeremiah actually speaking judgment to the people. The Lord saying, you have been so terrible. Turn away from your bad ways and turn toward me. Or I have to send the Babylonians in to take you out away from the land that I have chosen for you and put you into exile. But he gives them encouragement even in those times. The second reading for today is uh, a story from the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. And this is Jesus here talking with his disciples and he's been trying to make things clear to them. He's been healing lots of people and he's been speaking parables. And listen to what happens now when someone who is not a Jewish person comes and approaches Jesus. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. 
he replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. An amazing story. Maybe one we don't read so often. Because maybe it sounds a little bit like an exclusion. Or does it? When we read the story properly, actually, does it sound more like an inclusion? Well, let us think about those texts. And I want to also bring up something that I've read recently that I referred to a few weeks ago as well, and some of you might know it too. A few months ago, I read a powerful book called The Hiding Place by the Dutch Christian woman Corrie ten Boom who together with her family saved hundreds of, of Jewish people from sure death at the hands of the Nazis. When the Germans started their open persecution of the Jewish people in the 1930s, so this is before the war started, Corey's father quietly remarked, as he observed this, they have angered the Lord because they attack God's chosen people, the apple of his eye. And you know, when I read this statement in the book, it startled me. It startled me because it came from the mouth of Caspar ten Boom, Corey's father, a deeply Christian man who knew his Bible inside out and lived by it with his every breath. The apple of his eye, the Jewish people. Since I became a Christian 15 years ago, I learned how loved I was and how loved you are and how loved we all are as followers of Christ. I learned that we gain our identity from God's constant reassurance that we are his beloved children. The children of the Lord made co-heirs with him in Christ. Is this something you cling to in your walk with the Lord? I know I do. I really cling to that reassurance that I have. So it's interesting to contemplate the Jewish people, the chosen people, called the apple of the Lord's eye. It hasn't always been the way that it is now with all of us Christians, all of us followers of God, being loved so deeply by God. God created all people but he chose the Jewish people to bring redemption to the world. And it was through the Jewish people and their struggle to stay obedient to the Lord or not to be obedient that God has chosen to teach us much about his forgiving and gracious ways. What examples can you think of when I say that? About the Lord using the Jews to teach about how forgiving and loving he is despite their actions. How about the Israelites wandering through the desert? You know, God had parted the Red Sea for them. He fed them with manna and with quail and he quenched their thirst with water from the rock. And he guided them as a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. So visible. And yet what did the Israelites do? They kept complaining to God, didn't they? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? It would have been better for us to be slaves there than to starve here in the desert. This place is hot. This life is hard. Moses, you are a fool. Get us out of this pickle now. I mean, is God even real? They kept questioning and going on about this often. Pretty tough words when God keeps showing faithfulness and a saving arm again and again. Don't you think? In the end, despite all their grumbling, he leads them to the promised land and they go and live in it. And they don't live a perfect life there by any means. And God keeps warning them that they need to turn back to him. And they keep, sometimes they do it, and then very quickly they fall away again. Does this sound familiar? I mean, does this remind you of 
your life, the lives of the people around you? Well, hundreds of years later, after they'd first entered the promised land, God is still proving faithful to the people of Israel. Even though they are behaving so badly in the promised land that he's about to allow the Babylonians to invade and sent them into exile. God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah, who is the last prophet in line of many who've tried to warn the Israelites to change their ways and to return to the Lord. Jeremiah pleads with them, but do they listen? No, they do not listen. So the Babylon, the Babylonians, they will come. Jeremiah will see this. He will witness this and terrible suffering will overcome the Israelites because as you can imagine, they don't just march them out nicely in a line. There's going to be slaughtering. There's going to be terrible things happening as they are driven out of their country. And yet the Lord continues to be faithful to them and even comforts them through Jeremiah. And that's the reading we had today. The Lord reveals through Jeremiah that even though they will fall away and the Babylonians will come, that their suffering, that the exile and the hardship will have an end. And that they will see better days. The Lord says in verse 2 of Jeremiah 31 that we read today, the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. That's our God, ever comforting, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. Is that something you recognize from your own life? Well, it's a hope you can cling to for your own life, always, because that's who our amazing God is. Israel, Israel, the Lord worked through Israel for such a long time, and then something amazing happened. Jesus, a Jew himself, fully man and also fully God, came and showed us God so intimately and challenged all the religious rules and perceptions at the time. And then, when we come to the story that we heard in Matthew today, when a Canaanite, a non-Jewish woman, approaches Jesus with a request for healing for her daughter, Jesus, a Jew, points out that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, doesn't he? And as the non-Israelite, this woman, humbly persists, in faith, begging on her knees for healing for her daughter. In that moment, Jesus broke another barrier and extends God's mercy and gift of healing to people outside of the chosen people. This is incredible. And then finally, when the Holy Spirit falls not only on the Jews assembled in Jerusalem, as we read in Acts 2, but also on a multitude of Gentiles, as we read in Acts 9, we are overwhelmed with evidence that all people are now included in God's plan of salvation. He had promised to Abraham that all people will be blessed through him. And Jesus sends the disciples out to the ends of the earth to make disciples of all nations. And we are part of those disciples. The disciples of all nations, the ones that the barrier needed to be broken for. We are loved by God as much as he loves his chosen people. We are now also the apple of his eye. How the Israelites now today need our comfort and the hope that we can give them in the Lord. How we must pray for them to embrace the salvation that is theirs also through Christ, brought about by God through one of their very own. God will continue to be true to his word. And just as he revealed through Jeremiah that there would be singing and rejoicing at the end of the exile, and at that time that was an exile that hadn't even eventuated yet, so we can also cling to that same hope. I'm sure through all of this that I've been saying to you, you can recognize patterns in your own life too. 
What does God keep doing through all your doubtful times, all your fretting times, all your wavering times? God continues to be faithful. God continues to be constant. God continues to be the rock. And God continues to love. If you ever forget, open up to Jeremiah 31 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. The Lord spoke that to the Israelites. And now barriers have been broken through Christ. And all people, including even us, are included in this amazing promise that the Lord makes. You can live in it, embrace it freely, and be hopeful in it every day. Amen. Let us now come to a time of prayer together. And I think it's very appropriate today that we shall pray for the Jewish people particularly but also the needs that we have as a group here and continue to pray for our congregation. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that you have chosen the Israelites, that you have led them and that you have been faithful to them and that you have raised up Jesus among them to bring salvation through the Jews to the world, to everyone who embraces Lord, to everyone who will call on the name of the Lord because they will be saved, just as you have promised, Lord. Lord, we pray for the Jewish people. We pray that you will continue to have mercy on them, and that you will keep revealing yourself to them in Jesus, and that they can embrace Jesus as the Messiah, the Messiah they long for to come. We pray that you can help open their eyes so that they can see that you indeed have brought salvation upon the world, and that this is theirs to embrace. If just they can say by the Holy Spirit that you are Lord. Lord, we thank you that we are in a, in a place where you have opened our eyes. And we pray that you will continue to open our eyes to your word every day, to the people around us. Lord, that you can keep revealing to us where we can serve you and how we can uh, be the people that you want us to be right where we are. Lord, help us pin our hope only on you. You have loved us with an everlasting love and you will continue to show your grace and mercy to us, Lord. And for that, we are so thankful. And this is something so amazing. We can't contain it. We want to share it. We want to share it with our neighborhood. We want to share it with the world. We want to share it with our family. And we want to share it with the people who are giving us a hard time too, Lord. We want to share this with everyone. Let us be the beacon on the hill, the glowing light for you. Lord, we thank you that we can be your people and that we too can be the apple of your eye. That is so amazing. It's amazing that we can have this relationship with you, Lord. Lord, be with our Concordia congregation, our Pastor Michael, and all who work so hard to continue the ministry that our congregation has. We pray that we can continue to open doors into the neighbourhood, that we can create a space that is interesting and vibrant and loving and overflowing with your word so that more and more people can come to a great knowledge of you. Lord. Help us to be outward looking, Lord, and embrace the people that come to us. And help us to find ever new ways to touch the community that we have been placed in here at Dunkraig and beyond. Lord, we pray for our wider church and Lord, as the churches are starting to open up again more and more now, um, we pray that you will help them to put the right restrictions in place and to have the motivation and the vigour to start things up in person again, also in other states around Australia. Lord, please have mercy upon Victoria. Be with the Victorians and help them at this time where they are in lockdown once again because the coronavirus is rampant there at the moment. So many cases every day. Lord, heal our land and heal the world from the coronavirus, Lord, and help us to be able to open our countries up again to resume travel so that we can see loved ones once again. But Lord, also keep us safe and protected, Lord. Help us to make the right decisions. 
help our politicians to lead and guide us well through this time. Lord, we commit ourselves to you, each one of us, Lord, the people that are suffering in our midst and the people that are rejoicing and all the other people who are battling their own battles. Help us to always look to you, Lord. And we thank you that we can always do that. In Jesus' name, amen. That brings us to the end today. We'll leave you with a nice song that you can participate in as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen.